Welcome to the GAF1 Power Rankings, looking at the driver power rankings after every week's Grand Prix. Ten drivers will make these power ranking lists. They're not standings. They're just an effort to look at who's trending based on the most recent Grand Prix. Come with me as I run through this week's power rankings. Welcome back to my channel, Greg Allen F1. It is time for power rankings coming out of Bahrain and going back into Bahrain for another week. And missed power rankings a week ago because of my move. I apologize for that. Um, it's been a crazy couple weeks with my move, but I'm almost settled in. So this should become more frequent where I can get my videos out on time and as scheduled. Power rankings though, as always, I have my cutoff line of drivers who just missed jumping into the top 10, so I like to take a minute to talk about them. George Russell, the man of the hour, because he not only had a very good Grand Prix in Bahrain, almost finishing the points again for Williams, but of course, he will replace Lewis Hamilton for one week in the Mercedes, and we're going to get to see what George Russell can do in the best of the best equipment, and maybe by comparison, we're also going to see what he looks like in a direct competition with Valtteri Bottas and the other Mercedes. A massive dream opportunity for Russell early on in his career here. He's been stuck in the Williams for a couple years. Williams has progressed with George Russell, and this will actually help them next year for sure with the experience he's going to gain. But boy, does George Russell have an amazing opportunity going into this week. And I mean, he could win the race in that car. Uh, let's not set the expectations too high. Uh, a solid day in the points, he'll be thrilled with, but if he can finish on the podium with that Mercedes, what a great story that would be for him. Esteban Alcon, having a solid year, I think a lot of, of Esteban Alcon's year for me comes down to the fact that he missed a year. I, I think that if Alcon was in that Renault last year, uh, he'd be having a little bit more closer results to what we're seeing from Daniel Ricciardo. Uh, nonetheless, still another solid day in the points for him. Renault in general has been a lot better this year, and I expect him to continue progressing next year. Um, having Fernando Alonso is always uh, an interesting thing for, for teammates, so it'll be interesting to see how Akon and Alonso get on next year. But I do expect him to be better next year than he was this year, and I think he's been okay this year and solidly been improving, um, just maybe not as, as quickly as we would have liked to see. But either way, he's close to being in my top 10, just barely misses out. Sebastian Vettel, he's on my board. It doesn't have a great Bahrain Grand Prix. Ferrari in general didn't look very good again. Uh, however, Vettel did podium uh, a week earlier, and I didn't get a chance to do power rankings, so I did want to have him on the board. He's actually having a pretty solid end of the year for, for Ferrari. Um, I think they kind of got used to the normal of the fact that he won't be on that team next year, and, and that has now allowed them to actually focus on just the individual Grand Prix. And, and I feel like I have seen an improvement from Vettel uh, over the last few weeks. Bahrain wasn't a great example of that. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he has a decent Grand Prix coming into this weekend. And Sebastian Vettel also is trending in the right direction because he is directing right towards his new team next year. And I fully suspect that we'll see Sebastian Vettel um, finishing the points pretty much weekly and possibly battling for podiums and wins next year in Austin Martin. But with that it said, let's go to number 10. All right, coming in at number 10, the man with probably the worst luck in Formula 1 this year for me, Valtteri Bottas. Uh, I have him all the way down 10th. It's the worst I've had him all year, and how can I not? So he has had an opportunity many, many times this year to close that gap to Lewis Hamilton, and he just hasn't done it. Sitting on a couple of wins, of course, but every week it seems that something else prevents Valdry Botas from being able to be on the same level as his teammate, and it seems like every week we're talking about how Lewis is at the top of the mountain, and somehow Valdry Botas stumbled and fell back down it. And, and we don't know why. Uh, this time it was running over some debris and having a puncture under the safety car in the Bahrain Grand Prix. And just when, you know, you're kicking a guy when he's down here, Valdry Botas now is under, in my opinion, a ton of pressure being directly compared to George Russell. If George Russell completely outperforms him this week, I think that that is a man that's going to be um, under a ton of pressure and, and there's going to be a lot of questions asked about his place at Mercedes in that second seat. Um, that said, I do believe that this is a great opportunity for Valtteri Bottas. If you take the positive side of things, yes, he's under a lot of pressure with George Russell coming into that, that other Mercedes ride. But on the other hand, if you look at it from a good standpoint, he's now the number one driver for a week. The strategy is going to be 100% behind him, and he's got a great opportunity to qualify first and run away with another win and, and maybe gain some of that confidence and momentum back headed into 2021 
where he is on a contract for Mercedes for another year. So I look at it as an opportunity for him, but no doubt about it, the entire Formula One world is going to be looking at him with some pressure. And so far, he's had a lot of bad luck, and he drops all the way 10th for me on my power rankings. All right, coming in ninth for me in my power rankings. You finish on the podium, you make my power rankings. A guy who has dropped off my top 10 for some weeks and, and wasn't even in my cut line for a while. Alex Albon, who's had largely a disappointing season at Red Bull, so much so that his seat has been under scrutiny and, and possibly at risk. And some good things this week at the Bahrain Grand Prix and some bad things. He finishes on the podium. He puts himself in a situation where he crashes on Friday practice which is not a great way to start your weekend, but he does rebound, gets himself solidly in fourth, and is able to capitalize on a Checo engine failure to get himself on the podium. Gives Red Bull a double podium, which is something that I think is the expectation for that number two seat at Red Bull. Not good things, and it is just what the doctor ordered to get that podium, but as is with Albon's career at Red Bull, there is the other side of the coin that we are always talking about. Finishes between 24 and 30 seconds off of his teammate. I talked about that in my race review, and for me, that was a concern, and I posted that video right afterwards before I even heard Christian Horner's uh, interview and maybe more importantly, Max Verstappen's interview earlier today on it. Um, not impressed, or Red Bull, with that that podium. Um, they looked at it as a Checo mistake more than, more than an Albon success. Um, they said, yes, Albon did exactly what he needed to do to be in position, and getting a third place is solid, but Max Verstappen was very critical of him being almost 30 seconds off, off of him in that second Red Bull seat. So I don't think Albon's seat is necessarily safe just yet. Uh, Christian Hunter also had some really nice things to say about Checo, so you wonder it, it, what what's going on there. Um, I think my immediate reaction after the race was Albon's seat is probably safe now. Maybe not, though, after hearing some of these interviews. I think he's got two more weeks. If he finishes on the podium even one more time, I think he's safe. Um, but if it were me, I'd want to finish on the podium and maybe a fourth or fifth at worst in these last two Grand Prix. If he back-to-back -back podiums, I think he's okay. Um, but interesting that he's still under some pressure there at Red Bull. You can see me smiling here because Lando Norris is finally back in the top 10 for me. And McLaren comes through and has a fantastic weekend for me, finally. I love to see that out of that team. Really, really fun times for me when both McLaren cars are in the top 10 and competing for points, especially when they're further up that field. Lando has a fantastic day. Back where he started the year, where we were seeing him in that top four, top five, uh, pretty much week in, week out, before he started kind of slumping. And he responds and has a fantastic weekend. And for once, so does Carlos Sainz. So a really good weekend for both McLaren drivers. This is exactly what Lando Norris needs to be doing in the last two to three uh, races of the year. Gaining that momentum for next year and uh, a competition with this new teammate, Daniel Ricciardo, who is also having a fantastic season. Going to be really fun to watch these two drivers together next year. Lando back on to my power rankings at 8th. Super excited about that. I would love to see him get one more podium before the end of the year, but that might be asking a lot. I'm just glad that he was finally back in the top 5. Coming in at 7th for me, Charles Leclerc. So Leclerc for me has, has been a really good driver in what has been subpar equipment from Ferrari this year. The Bahrain Grand Prix, no exception for that. Ferrari once again struggles with their straight line speed. Um, kind of disappointing because it seemed like over the last few Grand Prix they were starting to to um, chop away at that speed and get it a little bit faster. Um, so much so that Sebastian Vettel was able to get a podium um, from starting pretty far back in the field. But they kind of go backwards a little bit at the Bahrain Grand Prix, which is not good news when you're in Bahrain for another week. Different uh, track setup, of course, um, and, and different uh, corners that they're going to be running now. However, I, I actually think the setup is going to create a, even more straight line speed this weekend. Um, so it could be some something to look out for with Ferrari. Nonetheless, with all those issues going on, uh, Leclerc has been, has been really good this year in that Ferrari and has impressed me a lot. Doesn't have a great Bahrain Grand Prix. I dropped him back. Last time I did power rankings, I had him up to fifth. But I, I think just on pure driving skill and talent... Um, this guy has nothing to prove, and when Ferrari figures it out with, with their speed and their power units, which they will while he's still driving there, you're going to see him right back up there competing for wins and podiums week in and week out. Uh, I can't in good conscience drop him lower than 7th right now, and I, I look forward to seeing him in faster equipment again in the, the years to come, but he's been really impressive for me all year. Similar to Lando Norris, I always have a smile on my face when I can put a McLaren driver in the top 10 of my power rankings. Carlos Sainz 
for me, has one of the better races of anyone in Bahrain. Was making fantastic passes all day long. Uh, he was really in the mood to have a good race, and, and he did have one. Um, constantly pressuring the cars in front of him. I thought he drove a, a really solid GP from start to finish in Bahrain. And, and again, I said it when we were talking about Lando Norris here. Having both McLarens up there and competitive like that is something that I've been waiting for all year. Even in the beginning of the year when Norris was, was, was having a fantastic start, uh, Carlos Sainz was having some issues where it seemed like every other Grand Prix he was having uh, a retirement. Not the case in Bahrain. Both drivers were fantastic. McLaren can play with their strategies a little bit, avoid undercuts, and, and do everything you need to do when they're running close to each other in the lineup. Um, ultimately, Norris has a little bit better day than Carlos Sainz, but I'm so thrilled with how both those drivers ran. And we got some good racing between Leclerc and Sainz throughout that Grand Prix as well. That was a lot of fun seeing these two drivers are going to be teammates next year. Either way, Carlos gets himself up to sixth on my power rankings, and I hope that they keep moving forward in the next two. All right, fifth place for me in my power rankings, Daniel Ricardo, the soon-to-be McLaren man, and I can't wait to have him aboard. Renault, in general, had a, a, a not great Grand Prix in Bahrain for me in the sense that I feel like there was a lot of missed opportunities strategies-wise. I, I mentioned that in my race review. Um, they mentioned it in the broadcast as well. They had an opportunity to swap Ricardo and Akon. Ricardo had the faster car for most of the day, and several times they found a situation where Akon was in front of him and Ricardo was uh, being held up by him. And, and then they actually undercut themselves. And I talked about that in my race review. Uh, I don't know what the race um, strategy team for Renault was doing at Bahrain, but they definitely cost themselves some speed. And the result was successful for McLaren. Uh, McLaren got by both of them and left them in the dust. And when you're, you're battling for that midfield constructor points, uh, kind of a missed opportunity for Renault in general. Ricardo himself doesn't have a fantastic Grand Prix. He struggled on the start, uh, both restarts they had from stop. And I, I think that medium compound tire that he started on didn't work out well for him. He seemed a little uncomfortable. And he lost a bunch of spots that he had to work the rest of the day to make up. Getting stuck behind his teammate twice did not help his cause. He has an overall okay day, but it could have been a lot better. And it's a little off the performances that we're used to seeing from Daniel Ricciardo. We're used to seeing him top six or better week in and week out. That wasn't the case this time around. All right, coming in fourth place, and I'm not going to knock... Checo any further than fourth. Of course, Sergio Perez. This guy should have had back-to-back -back podiums. We all know it. And unfortunately, a terrible week for Racing Point. Lance Stroll ends up upside down uh, on lap three of this Grand Prix. And Checo loses his engine with just a few laps remaining. And what would have been an easy cruise to a third place and a back-to-back -back podium for a guy who somehow doesn't have a ride at, that we know of in Formula One next year. In my opinion, if you gave me uh, a, a list of top three drivers that have impressed me the most this season, it would be hard for me not to have Checo in that. Uh, he's flown up the, the driver standings in the World Championship, even though he's missed two races. He's been extremely impressive, not even close over who has been the better of the two racing point drivers. And this guy doesn't have a ride. I, someone needs to fix that. Um, we might not see him in 2021. I've been hearing good rumors about 2022, regardless of what happens here. But you don't wish anything bad on Alex Albon. But if Albon is replaced by Checo, I, it's tough because I feel like Checo needs to be in Formula 1 next year. I'm rooting for Albon to hold on to his seat because I hate to see someone lose a ride um, all up here, Gasly. But there's just something about Checo and the way he's been driving this year. I feel like he's in the prime of his career right now, and it seems so ashamed that with the performance he's been having that he might not be in Formula 1 next year. He was just fantastic in Bahrain. He's been fantastic the last, well, really every race. I, I don't even want to say that there was a time that he wasn't fantastic this year. He's impressed me all year long. I don't know how anyone could not be rooting for him at this point. Fourth place on my power rankings. If not for an engine failure, we're talking about uh, the best back-to-back -back Grand Prix of his career podium twice so i expect him to podium again before the end of this year and, and leave making a statement if he's not going to be here next year coming in at number three pierre pierre gasly of course uh and for me he has a fantastic grand prix he gets a little lucky with checo's engine going it, it kind of saved him from maybe being passed for a spot or two but p6 again for pierre gasly and the alpha taris that uh, at this point if you're going by a teammate comparison maybe the alpha taris aren't that good and gasly's getting more out of them because um, if you go by what Kvyat's done in, in that car, 
Uh, I mean, Kvyat was hitting everybody on the track that he could hit. Some his fault, some is not. But uh, he he was in all the wrong places at all the wrong times at Bahrain. Whereas Pierre Gasly was in all the right places at all the right times. They do get a little lucky with that late safety car and it ending under there. It probably saved them from losing one or two positions in the end. But Pierre Gasly has just been so good this year when given the opportunity. I mean, mechanical failures or or an accident hasn't taken him out. Pierre Gasly has pretty much been a, a solid driver with a chance to podium and, and finish solidly in the points around 6th, 7th, and 8th every single week. And AlphaTauri, if AlphaTauri keeps progressing this way and, and they can actually achieve even coming close to being that sister team that Red Bull likes to talk about, I love Pierre Gasly in that seat and in that ride. The team loves him, and, and I think... And I, by the team, I mean AlphaTauri, maybe not Red Bull. <laughs> but the team seems to love him as well. And, and I think he's in a great position. And I expect a, more of this in 2021. And it really, I expect Gasly on the podium a lot more next year. Uh, the way they're progressing and the way things are going for him. Definitely one of my drivers of the year. And, and it's just another impressive performance. And I love his attitude. That's probably my biggest thing uh, about Pierre Gasly in 2020 versus 2019, where he was under all that Red Bull pressure. He's just like such a happy and, and grateful driver. You can't help but have a big smile every time that Gasly's on uh, on an interview. He's just always so enthusiastic about where he is and what he's accomplished in 2020. And he's been one of the drivers of the year, no doubt. So third place for me for Pierre Gasly. All right, second place for me, Max Verstappen. And I, I say this every single week. Max Verstappen does everything he can to win Grand Prix. And I think going into Bahrain number two, He's got a really good chance of winning the race on Sunday. There's no Lewis Hamilton, and if anyone can capitalize on that, he consistently beats the number two Mercedes car in Valtteri Bottas pretty frequently this year. He has been able to split up those two Mercedes, and now Lewis Hamilton isn't going to be behind that. Um, it's still going to be hard to beat Mercedes. They're the two fastest cars on the, on the course, regardless of who's behind it. But that experience that Hamilton brings to that, a seven-time champion, is now being replaced by a young and eager George Russell. If there was ever an opportunity for Verstappen to get his second win of the year, it'll be this weekend. Um, if you're giving me money to put on this, and I'm not saying you should, because that could be dangerous, but if you gave me some money to gamble on this one, Verstappen's my pick to win the race on Sunday. He's been so good and just slightly edged by, by a flawless Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes and mistakes at the wrong time. Verstappen needed a, a very fast pit stop when they tried to undercut Mercedes this week to have any chance in the world. And a team that has had many sub two second pit stops all year long gives them a five second pit stop at the world's worst time. And these type of things have just added up to be out of Verstappen's hands. The guy is has been fantastic all year, and he really deserves more than one year or one win, I should say, in the year of 2020. Um, and I think he's going to have his chance this Sunday, number two for sure. Which brings me to number one, and you'll notice that number one, I've been having Lewis Hamilton's name just up there. Uh, I didn't do that today because it's going to be a special number one. All right, coming in at number one for me, 1A is Roman Grosjean and 1B is Lewis Hamilton. And we'll start with Lewis Hamilton. Hamilton wins the Grand Prix, seven-time champion. Mercedes wins the Constructors. Uh, on pure performance-wise, there's no one better than Lewis Hamilton this year in Formula One. And he almost led every single lap of the Bahrain Grand Prix, save for one. And looks flawless. Sad to see that he's going to not be able to make this week because of COVID. Um, it is the safe thing to do to quarantine him, but records could be falling like crazy had he been able to race in that race. And, and you know, say what you want about Lewis Hamilton. I know there's a lot of haters out there and there's a lot of lovers. Um, what you're seeing is history. And as someone who also watches a sport like NASCAR, Jimmy Johnson won seven titles there. And I never once took for granted what I was witnessing because I knew one day it would be over. And I, I, don't like not seeing ha Hamilton in that Grand Prix. It's going to be exciting. We we don't know who's going to win for one week. And, and all the, the fanfare that's going to go into George Russell being in that car and the crazy circus that we have of drivers going into different cars for this weekend. It makes for great television and good entertainment. But at the end of the day, I want to see the best drivers in the best cars racing every single week. That's what Formula One's really about. Pushing the limits and being the fastest you can be. And Lewis Hamilton being in a Mercedes and being able to race on Sunday is best for Formula One in general. So I, I do hope that he gets better soon. 1A though for me, Roman Grosjean. And, and that's just a, a, a sign of me giving some respect to Roman Grosjean. Uh, obviously what happened this weekend doesn't need to be talked about anymore in this video. Everyone's talked about it so much. But anyone who, who uh, comes out of that 
um, with such a positive attitude and I, I'm just so grateful that he is out of the hospital and doing well. And for me, um, that's more important than Formula One. That, that is, you know, life in general. That is the most important thing that, that can come out of last weekend. Uh, Roman Grosjean is, is a father and a husband uh, and, a, and a really good guy in general. Um, when we talk about Formula One, of course, there's been criticisms uh, of his performances over the last few years. Um, but he's had his high moments, too. He's a fantastic race car driver. I will miss him in Formula One. Uh, I do think the move that Haas made uh, it was necessary. But... You don't like to see that kind of thing happen to anyone, and we are a community and a family in Formula One, from the drivers straight down to the fans and the random guys on YouTube posting Formula One videos, and I think everybody there felt that that warmth of family um, when one of our, our own in the sport was at risk on Sunday, and seeing him out of the hospital, I think everyone can share that, that same relief. And Roman Grosjean is my driver of the week, my power ranking number one, and he deserves to be. And I hope to see him in the car in Abu Dhabi. And I hope that both these drivers are, are back sooner rather than later. So that's my power rankings for this week, going to Bahrain number two. Only two more Grand Prix left, and then the long wait before Drive to Survive, which will be super interesting this year for, for Netflix, I'm sure. And we'll see if this season can get going in March in Australia as planned, or if, you know, COVID is going to have its way and, and mess things up next year too. Uh, hopefully that's not the case, of course, but only two more Grand Prix. Thank you for watching. If you came across this channel, please consider giving me a like and a subscribe. I usually put out videos two to three times a week. I have been in the middle of a move, so it's been a little less the last couple weeks, but that'll be back to normal in about a week. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.